Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and I hope you're all doing well. Today I wanted to share with you a travel vlog from my Golden Week when my friends and I went to Guma Prefecture. Golden Week is what we call the holiday season during the end of April to the beginning of May since there are multiple national holidays close to each other. These are my very close and dear friends that I love who I've known since before we started university together but after we graduated and started working and also due to the pandemic it's been a bit hard to meet up and go travel together but we all planned this trip ahead of time and we were super excited to go to Guma together. We left Tokyo in the morning and arrived at Takasaki Station in Guma Prefecture and we decided to get lunch at the station before getting on the train again. We wanted to get some local dishes so we decided to go to this restaurant called Guma no Daidokoro, meaning the kitchen of Guma. I got this beef kamameshi and kamameshi is a traditional Japanese rice dish cooked in an iron pot. Our lunch was super delicious and on a full stomach, we headed back onto a train to go to an area of Guma called Minakami. This day had such beautiful weather and I really enjoyed just staying out of the window to see the countryside scenery. We finally arrived at Minakami Station and this area is a mountainous onsen or hot spring resort. Right when you go out of the station, you are greeted by many little shops and restaurants. We did see some other tourists like us that had come for their vacation, but it wasn't crowded at all which is nice. When people come to Guma, most people often go to the Kusatsu Onsen area so it tends to be a little bit more crowded, but Minakami was very calm and we didn't have to worry about the others. We were going to have the shuttle bus pick us up to take us to our ryokan, or traditional Japanese hotel, that we had booked. But we arrived a bit early and had some time, so we decided to just walk there instead since it wasn't too far. I love walking around the area whenever I go somewhere new since there's often so many nice things that you don't get to see when you travel by car or train and I'm always thankful for friends who are always down to walk. These little local small streets were so nice and there were actually a lot of interesting shops and cafes that I wish we had time to stop by. Outside of the ryoka was a river and there was also even a little ashiyu or footpath area which is quite common to see in these onsen towns. You are free to take off your shoes and socks and dip your feet in the warm water. We made it to our ryoka which was called Minakami Kang. It was a really nice ryoka if you're ever looking for a place to stay in Guma I definitely recommend. We checked in and spent a few minutes unloading our things and resting in our room. We decided to head out again to go on a walk and explore the area nearby. We found a michi no eki or roadside rest stop and they were selling grilled fish and crepes outside and we also spent a while looking around the gift shop. I love Japan's souvenir culture so much, it's so fun to try different local specialties and get limited edition snacks and 
flavors at the Michino Eki. Visiting one of these rest stops is a fun part of going on drives through Japan, and it's a nice place to fill your stomach with local specialties and also freshen up after a long time on the road. Lots of Michinoki also sell produce that has been grown nearby. We decided to get a little snack and I got this strawberry dorayaki ice cream and also a Michinoki limited edition spicy chicken flavored jagariko. And my friend got the strawberry vanilla konyaku ice cream. We also saw another Ashiu foot bath at the rest stop. The sun was starting to go down, so we headed back to our ryokan and decided to take a bath before dinner. Many of you may not have experience with onsen hot springs in Japan, but it is truly one of the greatest things you can experience. It's just so relaxing, and even if you might feel embarrassed at the idea of bathing naked with strangers or your friends, it's very normal and absolutely no one cares or is looking at you, so if you have a chance, please, please try it. After our bath, we changed into our yukata and headed to the dining hall. One of the great things about staying at a ryokan is you get to eat delicious kaiseki ryori, which is the traditional multi-course Japanese dinner. There are many individual dishes prepared in various ways with many different ingredients, and I felt so busy while eating because I was so excited to try all of them. It's also fun because you get to be part of the experience and you get to prepare part of it, such as by pouring in the egg or grilling the meat and vegetables. In order for the guests to eat the food right away when it is fresh, they usually have the rice or soups cooking right in front of you. After eating, we were so full and satisfied with our meal, but then suddenly the staff came out with a cake and we were surprised because this wasn't any specific celebration trip. It turned out that one of my friends who made the booking for the ryokan had ordered a cake for fun to surprise us and she wrote Daisuki itsumo arigato which means I love you, thank you always. We all cracked up and we were so touched. We hadn't been expecting that at all but it was so sweet and it was a gesture that we definitely weren't expecting. The next day after breakfast, we headed out to go canoeing since Minakami is famous for its outdoor sports. The weather this day wasn't so great and we were quite worried if the water conditions would be okay, but the rain eventually got better and we were able to go. Canoeing was really fun. We don't get much chance to do these types of activities living in Tokyo, so it was a great experience. While we were there, a dad with his very young son who was also canoeing with us accidentally flipped over into the freezing water and I got so scared watching it happen in front of our eyes but luckily they were both saved immediately and ended up being completely fine. It was really cold and we were tired from canoeing so after we finished and headed back to Minakami station, we found a cozy little restaurant called Chako. The old ladies running the store were so nice and friendly and they served us homemade konyaku. I'll talk a bit more about konyaku later in the video, but I had never had homemade konyaku before and it was so good. I wanted to try the okirikomi, which is a local specialty dish of guma. It is a noodle dish made with a very flat and wide udon and lots of vegetables. My friends all got this maitake deluxe, which came with maitake mushroom tempura. Everything was so yummy and warmed up our bodies, and before we left, the shop staff chatted with us and gave us a little snack. We finished our lunch just in time to catch the train back toward Takasaki, and once we arrived, we took some time to do our gift shopping to bring back home. I like the wide noodles so much that I decided to buy a pack and try and make it myself. 
We still had the rest of the day and we got on the local railway line to go to the Konyak Park. The trains and stations in the countryside can be quite different from what people have gotten used to in the city and we couldn't use our IC cards so we bought a train ticket and went on our way. In the smaller local railway lines, the stations are often mujineki or unstaffed. It's hard to imagine if you've only been to the city such as Tokyo or Osaka, but apparently half of all of the train stations in Japan are unstaffed. The Konyak Park was a bit far from the station and there was no one around, so we called for a taxi to pick us up and take us. Konyaku Park is a factory theme park for all things Konyaku. If you have never heard of it, Konyaku is a type of gelatinous food that is made from Konyaku potato, and 90% of the potatoes are grown in Guma Prefecture. At the Konyaku Park, you can enjoy a factory tour, make Konyaku yourself, eat at the free Konyaku buffet, and of course, buy all sorts of Konyaku products. There was even a tsumehodai, which means all you can stuff. So you can see how much konyaku products you can stuff into a plastic bag for 500 yen. Of course, the free buffet was very popular, especially on a rainy holiday like that day. So we stood in line and waited for our turn. It moved actually quite fast, so we got to choose from various dishes made from different konyaku products. It's really amazing the different shapes that konyaku can take with just a little creativity, and they want to show people how you can enjoy it in so many different ways. Konyaku is quite popular as a diet ingredient since it contains almost no calories, sugar, fat, or protein. Um, it's actually a great source of vitamins and minerals, and it apparently also helps lower blood pressure and control cholesterol levels. And so for these reasons, a lot of people in Japan like to eat konyaku as part of their diet. They also have some other local foods that you could buy home as well. Konyakupaku also had an ashiyu area outside with five different foot baths. It looked fun outside as well, but unfortunately this day was rainy and we also didn't have much time, so we went back to the station and slowly made our way back to Tokyo. This trip was so fun, it had been a while since the five of us got to go on a trip together and we were so happy and made so many great memories. Thank you all for coming along with me and I hope you enjoyed. If you ever have a chance, please check out Guma Prefecture. Also, I just wanted to say I really appreciate when you guys comment that you want more frequent uploads. I also want to upload more frequently as well, but life always just gets so busy. But please let me know what kind of content you'd be interested in seeing. I uploaded another highly requested lookbook video a couple weeks ago, but let me know if there's anything else that you want to see. More simple daily vlog videos or travel videos, food videos, etc. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.